Mick Jagger, a name synonymous with the rebellious spirit of rock and roll, has stood at the forefront of the genre for over six decades. As the charismatic frontman of the Rolling Stones, he not only shaped the sound of rock music, but also became an enduring icon of the counterculture movement. His dynamic stage presence and distinctive voice propelled the band from London's burgeoning music scene to international superstardom. Yet, away from the limelight and the adulation of millions, Jagger navigated the complexities of personal life with its own set of highs and lows, marked notably by his high-profile relationships and the balancing act of a public persona. Join us as we trace the footprints of Jagger's remarkable adventure through the world of rock and roll. Mick Jagger, often hailed as rock's greatest frontman, was born on July 26, 1943. He is a powerhouse British singer, songwriter, actor, and producer, whose influence on music and culture is unparalleled. With his band, the Rolling Stones, Jagger stormed the music scene in the 1960s and has kept the world captivated ever since. His unique voice and electrifying stage presence have become the stuff of legend. As the lead vocalist of the Rolling Stones, Jagger crafted some of the most enduring hits in rock and roll. Their music, a blend of raw energy and emotional depth, has garnered a massive fan base and numerous awards. Jagger's artistry has not been confined to music alone. His ventures into film and his entrepreneurial spirit have showcased a multifaceted talent. Despite reaching dizzying heights of fame, Jagger's personal life has seen its share of the spotlight. Marked by a series of high-profile relationships and the challenges that come with a life lived on a grand scale, Mick Jagger's heart, like his music, skipped from beat to beat, from one romance to another, painting a picture of a man who loved as passionately as he lived. It all started in the buzz of the swinging 60s. Young Mick, with his mop of hair and that razor-sharp cheekbone grin, found himself in the arms of Chrissy Shrimpton. She wasn't just any girl, she was the face that launched a thousand mod fashions, the sister of the famous model Jean Shrimpton. They were the darlings of London, arm in arm, living the high life, where the music never stopped and the cameras never stopped flashing. But like a shooting star that burns too bright, their love fizzled out. Not long after, a singer named Marianne Faithful walked into Mick's life. With her golden voice and eyes to match, she wasn't just a muse, she was a mirror to Mick's own fiery creativity. Together they made music and memories, but even the sweetest songs came to an end. Their parting was the talk of the town, a romance that had soared as high as a kite but had to come down eventually. Then came Bianca Perez Mora Macias. Mick Jagger's marriage to Bianca Perez Mora Macias was emblematic of the rock and roll lifestyle he embodied. The pair met in 1970 and their courtship rapidly became fodder for the press. Fascinated by the union of the Rolling Stones' rebellious lead singer and the Nicaraguan-born beauty, their wedding on May 12, 1971, was a glamorous affair, set against the backdrop of the sun-drenched French Riviera in Saint-Tropez. The event attracted a who's who of the era's cultural icons, including fellow band members and celebrities, all eager to witness the union of two of the era's most talked-about figures. Bianca, pregnant and radiant in a white Yves Saint Laurent suit, became an instant fashion icon. The image of the couple outside the town hall became a lasting symbol of 70s rock and roll extravagance. Yet, beneath the glossy veneer, their marriage was fraught with challenges. Jagger's relentless touring schedule with the Rolling Stones and the temptations that came with it put a strain on the relationship. Bianca, often left to her own devices, became a fixture of the international jet-set scene, developing her own identity as an advocate for humanitarian issues. The couple's public appearances often belied the tensions that simmered beneath. Interviews with Bianca in the ensuing years would reveal a tale of loneliness and neglect, a contrast to the glamorous life that the public perceived. Jagger's infidelity was an open secret and the tabloids relished in detailing his escapades, further fueling the narrative of a marriage on the rocks. Their divorce in 1978 was as high profile as their wedding, marked by a contentious legal battle that was closely watched by the world. Bianca famously said, my marriage ended on my wedding day, a quote that encapsulated the disillusionment of their relationship. The couple's separation added to the mythos surrounding Jagger. 
a man whose personal life was as turbulent and passionate as the music he created. The end of his marriage to Bianca did not quell his romantic endeavors. It merely turned the page to a new chapter in his storied personal life. Stories about the reasons behind their divorce abounded. Some speculated that it was never a marriage of love, but of convenience and image, a strategic move in the chess game of celebrity relationships. Others whispered of secret deals and clandestine agreements, though these rumors were never substantiated with hard evidence. Post-divorce, Bianca continued to forge her path, becoming a vocal human rights advocate and environmentalist. Her work with the Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation positioned her as a respected figure in international activism. Her legacy, transcending her marriage to Jagger. As for Mick, his romantic life remained a subject of public fascination. Marriage and divorce were topics he seldom discussed in depth, maintaining a level of privacy and mystery that has always surrounded his offstage persona. As the 80s rolled around, Mick's heart found a new beat with Jerry Hall. She was a Texan model with hair as gold as the midday sun and a smile that could light up the darkest London alley. They shared vows under the Bali sun in a ceremony that was exotic as it was heartfelt. Though it turned out the law didn't see it that way. Mick and Jerry's life together was a roller coaster of love, with four children, Elizabeth, James, Georgia May, and Gabriel. They were the picture of a rock star family, but even pictures fade, and they went their separate ways at the close of the millennium. In the mix of it all, Mick was a father several times over. Karis, his firstborn with actress Marsha Hunt, came into his life like a sweet melody. Then there was Lucas, his boy with Brazilian model Luciana Gimenez, whose arrival signaled the end of his time with Jerry. And the youngest, Devereaux, the littlest Rolling Stone, with ballerina Melanie Hamrick. Mick's life has been a tapestry of love stories, each a vibrant thread in the colorful weave of his life. He's loved fiercely, sometimes messily, always truthfully. His relationships have been as public as his concerts, and he's never shied away from the joy and the pain that comes with each. Mick's journey also included a lot of challenges. Back in the day, his wild parties were the stuff of legend, the kind where the music blared, the drinks flowed, and the crowd was a blur of dancing bodies. But one such bash at Keith Richards' place in 67 got too loud, and the cops showed up. Mick found himself behind bars, facing a three-month sentence. It was a scare, all right, but he got off on appeal, thanks to a sharp legal team and a bit of luck. But that wasn't Mick's last issue with the law. The late 60s were a tricky time, with another arrest, this time with his girlfriend Marianne Faithful, and then again in 72 after a scrap with a photographer. You see, Mick was part of that rock and roll scene that flirted with danger, where living on the edge was just part of the day's work. Now, Mick's troubles weren't just with the police. He had a taste for the wild side, and drugs were part of the scene. He wasn't shy about it either, dabbling in everything from LSD to heroin. But here's where the tale twists. When Jerry Hall stepped into his life, she wasn't having any of it. She laid it out straight, clean up, or she was out. That's what did the trick. Mick, perhaps seeing what he might lose, decided to kick the habit. It wasn't easy, but it was that or say goodbye to Jerry. His hedonistic lifestyle wasn't just about the drugs, it was the whole package. The man was a magnet for mayhem, with a love life that had more twists than a mystery novel and parties that never seemed to end. During his musical career, Mick Jagger underwent a spiritual evolution. His spiritual journey has been as eclectic as his music. Growing up, he was part of the Church of England, which is pretty standard for kids in Britain. But life's a twisty road, and when he married Bianca, he switched lanes to Catholicism because love makes you do surprising things like that. Later on, Mick took a walk on the quiet side, finding peace in the chants and calm of Buddhism. Imagine him, the rock and roll legend, sitting with Buddhist monks, starting each day with meditation, lost in the rhythm of ancient words. But Mick's never been one to stick to just one tune. He's also had a flip through The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins and found himself nodding along. It seems he's more into the vast wonders of the universe than the idea of a single divine being. He thinks fighting and dying for religious ideas is the worst kind of battle. Now, we will explore Mick Jagger's musical career. Mick Jagger's musical journey began long before the world knew his name. In the 1950s, he was just another kid with a love for music. It was at Wentworth Primary School that he crossed paths with Keith Richards, but their early friendship faded as they attended different schools. 
It wasn't until the chance reunion at a train station in 1961 that their shared passion for rock and roll reignited. They bonded over records by Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters. Their shared love for rhythm and blues bonded them, and this reunion would be the catalyst for something much bigger. With Keith's devotion to the guitar and mixed magnetic voice, the duo was set on a path that would shake the foundations of rock and roll. It's a little known fact that before fame, Mick was a student at the London School of Economics, a path far removed from the swaggering frontman persona he was to adopt. It's almost comical to imagine Jagger, the rock legend, as a student of economics. But it was here that he found the final members to complete the band that would become the Rolling Stones. In these early years, the Rolling Stones were born out of a shared apartment and many late nights. Brian Jones, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman, and Ian Stewart joined Mick and Keith to forge a band that would soon become synonymous with the rebellious spirit of rock. Their first official lineup took shape in 1962, and the group quickly made a name for themselves with gigs at venues like the Marquee Club in London. Instead, his life was about the fusion of blues and rock, the grinding of guitars against the backdrop of a society on the cusp of a cultural shift. It was about electrifying performances in dingy clubs that set the stage for what would become one of the greatest rock and roll bands in the world. Names like Alexis Corner and Cyril Davies might not be household ones, but in Mick's early years, they were pivotal. These blues band leaders offered the Rolling Stones some of their first gigs, and it was under their watchful eyes that Mick honed his craft. One might argue that without the influence of these British blues pioneers, the Mick Jagger we know today might not exist. The band was officially named the Rolling Stones after a Muddy water song called Rolling Stone. They started playing gigs at venues like the Crawdaddy Club, where their reputation began to swell. It was here they caught the attention of manager Andrew Lug Oldham, who saw their raw energy and potential for greatness. Oldham was instrumental in crafting their bad boy image, a contrast to the clean-cut Beatles. The Stones were marketed as the rebellious alternative, and this reputation stuck. Oldham also encouraged the band to start writing their own music, leading to Jagger and Richards forming a songwriting partnership that would become legendary. It was their original material that would eventually catapult the Rolling Stones from a covers band into a musical force. By 1964, the band had achieved their first hit with Not Fade Away, a cover of a Buddy Holly song that was emblematic of their rock and blues fusion. Their self-titled debut album, filled with blues covers and a single Jagger Richards original, was a commercial success, solidifying their place in the British music scene. Some speculated that their sudden surge in fame was too good to be true, suggesting that it was manufactured by music industry moguls intent on creating a Beatles rival. But these theories held little water in the face of the band's clear musical talent and growing legions of fans. The Rolling Stones quickly became known for their electrifying live performances. Jagger's dynamic stage presence, often described as both mesmerizing and slightly menacing, helped to establish him as one of rock's most iconic frontmen. As the decade progressed, the band's sound evolved. The rawness of their early blues style began to blend with the psychedelic influences of the era. Albums like Aftermath, released in 1966, and Between the Buttons showcased this shift, featuring more complex arrangements and a broader range of instruments. The album Aftermath marked a significant turn in the Stones' career. It was their first album composed entirely of original material, much of it reflecting Jagger and Richard's growing songwriting prowess. Songs like Mother's Little Helper and Under My Thumb were sharp social commentaries, encapsulating the shifting mores and tensions of the era. The Jagger-Richards partnership was flourishing, and hits like Paint It Black and Ruby Tuesday were proof of their creative synergy. As the 1960s came to a close, the Rolling Stones had established themselves as the legends of rock rebellion. Their music had taken on a harder edge, and their lyrics often reflected the social and cultural upheavals of the time. But it wasn't just their music that was pushing boundaries. Mick's stage performances were unlike anything seen before. The Jagger swagger, complete with pouty lips and gyrating hips, became legendary. He was the pulsating heart of the band's live performances, drawing crowds into a frenzied, almost hypnotic state. In this heady mix of success, the Stones courted controversy, both intentionally and unintentionally. 
Their rebellious image was no act. It was a lifestyle that often landed them in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. The band's music during this period also became the subject of strange fan theories. Their Satanic Majesty's Request, 1967, with its psychedelic sound and surreal imagery, fueled rumors that the band was dabbling in the occult. This speculation reached a fever pitch with the release of Sympathy for the Devil, a song that some believed was a literal tribute to Lucifer. The Stones never fully dispelled these rumors, perhaps enjoying the mystique they created. It was also a time of personal growth for Jagger. His relationship with Marianne Faithful, an icon in her own right, was highly publicized. Faithful was often credited with influencing the band's style and sound, particularly with the hauntingly beautiful As Tears Go By, which she co-wrote with Jagger and Richards. The innocence of the early 60s was gone, and a new age of introspection and experimentation was taking its place. Albums like Beggar's Banquet, 1968, and Let It Bleed, 1969, were raw and gritty, reflecting the changing times with songs like Street Fighting Man and Gimme Shelter. The 1970s era was inaugurated with the release of Sticky Fingers in 1971, an album that bore the first appearance of the now iconic tongue and lip design and house tracks. This period saw Jagger evolve both as an artist and a celebrity. His reputation as a quintessential rock star was bolstered by songs that spoke of excess and hedonism, mirroring his own life. The band's 1972 double album, Exile on Main Saint, became a classic, a ragged masterpiece that drew from the breadth of American music tradition. Yet, as their stars continued to rise, the Stones were dogged by controversy. The early 70s were marred by the infamous drug busts, Richard's arrest in France for drug possession in 1973, and the subsequent legal battles added a layer of notoriety to the band's image and fueled rumors that they were being targeted by authorities determined to make an example of them. Amidst this turmoil, the Stones continued to churn out hits. Angie, a ballad from the 1973 album Goat's Head Soup, showed the world a more reflective side of Jagger and the band. However, the album was met with mixed reviews, signaling to some a decline in the band's creative force. By the mid-1970s, the landscape of rock was changing, the raw energy of punk was on the rise, and disco was taking over the dance floors. The Stones adapted to these shifts with Some Girls in 1978, an album that included a foray into disco with Miss You and a nod to punk with Shattered. This adaptability showed the Stones were not relics of the 60s, but were still vital forces in music. As the 1970s drew to a close, the Rolling Stones faced internal friction. Jagger's growing celebrity and outside interests began to create a divide between him and Richards. The tensions within the band became fodder for the press, with speculation rife about their possible split. Despite the personal and professional dramas, the Stones' end-of-decade releases, including Some Girls and Emotional Rescue, were critical and commercial successes. These albums demonstrated the band's remarkable ability to stay relevant and indicated that Jagger's creative well was far from dry. Jagger, ever the embodiment of rock's chameleonic nature, found himself at a juncture. It was during this era that he decided to step out as a solo artist, releasing She's the Boss in 1985. His debut solo effort was met with anticipation and curiosity. Fans and critics alike were eager to see if Jagger could capture the Stones' magic on his own. The album, featuring the hit Just Another Night, displayed his knack for crafting catchy tunas. But it also stirred tensions within the band, particularly with Keith Richards. This foray into solo artistry was seen by some as an act of defiance, a sign that the story Jagger Richards partnership, known as the Glimmer Twins, might be dimming. In the midst of his personal ventures, Jagger didn't stray too far from the Stones. The band released Tattoo You in 1981, which included the hit Start Me Up, proving their enduring appeal. However, it was clear that the dynamics within the band were shifting. Richards and Jagger, once a seemingly inseparable songwriting duo, were now navigating a complex relationship marked by public spats and reconciliations. 
This tension was fodder for the tabloids, sparking rumors that the band was on the brink of disbanding. Despite these challenges, Jagger's solo career was gaining momentum. His second solo album, Primitive Cool, released in 1987, while not a commercial success, was critically acknowledged for its sophisticated sound and introspective lyrics, a departure from the Stones' raw ethos. Some fans theorized that Jagger's move away from the band was a calculated effort to establish a separate legacy, one not tied to the Stones' controversies and the wild persona he had cultivated. Amidst the solo projects and band tensions, the Rolling Stones continued to tour, drawing massive crowds and proving that their collective magic was intact. The live performances were as electrifying as ever, with Jagger's stage presence undiminished by time. The tours served as a reminder of the band's longevity and their uncanny ability to bring fans together, despite the rumors of discord. Looking to the 90s, Jagger and the Rolling Stones faced a new era of music dominated by the rise of a new style of music. It was a time that would demand reinvention and reaffirmation of their relevance in an ever-changing musical landscape. In 1991, the Stones ended a three-year hiatus and ventured back into the studio to record what would be Voodoo Lounge, a return to their bluesy roots that would eventually earn them a Grammy. This album's success was an indication of the Stones' enduring appeal and was seen by many as a comeback, though in truth, they had never really gone away. It showed that even as musical trends shifted, the Stones could still capture the spirit of the times. This period saw Jagger, now in his late 40s, still strutting on stage with the same youthful swagger that had become his trademark. The Stones' tours were record-breaking events, with the Voodoo Lounge Tour becoming the highest-grossing tour of any artist at that time. Jagger's ability to captivate stadium-sized crowds was as potent as ever. As the world approached a new millennium, the Rolling Stones showed no signs of slowing down. They released Bridges to Babylon in 1997, experimenting with new sounds and producers. The album, while receiving a mixed response, demonstrated the band's willingness to experiment and adapt to the current musical climate. Rumors that had once clung to the Stones like a second skin had begun to fade, replaced by a more straightforward narrative of survival and longevity. The band had become living legends, with every new album and tour adding to their mythos. The year 2002 marked the band's 40th anniversary, an occasion celebrated with the release of 40 Licks, a greatest hits compilation that also featured new tracks. It was a sign of the band's enduring popularity, with Don't Stop and Keys to Your Love, proving that Jagger and his bandmates were still capable of churning out hits. The accompanying tour, Licks Tour, saw them playing in packed stadiums around the world. Mick Jagger's personal achievements were also highlighted during this era. In 2003, he was knighted for his services to music, Sir Michael Philip Jagger, an honor that acknowledged his contributions to the cultural fabric of Britain and beyond. However, this accolade was not without its detractors. Keith Richards publicly expressed disdain for Jagger's acceptance of the knighthood. Here's a guy who went to London School of Economics, for Christ's sake, you know, I mean, this is like not one for the higher art. Viewing it as a betrayal of their anti-establishment roots, sparking new rounds of speculation about the state of their relationship. Richards writes of the distance between the pair in his book, Life, saying, I used to love Mick, but I haven't been to his dressing room in 20 years. Sometimes I think I miss my friend. I wonder, where did he go? The early 2000s saw the Stones still grappling with the implications of their legacy. The release of A Bigger Bang in 2005, their first studio album in almost eight years, was met with critical acclaim. Songs like Rough Justice and Streets of Love echoed the band's classic sound, like like the back of my while proving that they could still deliver fresh material. Yet, even as they continued to celebrate their past, the Rolling Stones were not immune to the hands of time. Health scares, including Jagger's throat surgery in 2004 
and Keith Richards' head injury in 2006 were reminders of their mortality. These incidents fueled rumors that the band's future was in jeopardy, with fans and critics speculating whether the Stones could continue at the same relentless pace. The band's influence extended beyond music, with Jagger's keen business acumen coming to the forefront. He was involved in various business ventures, including the launch of the band's fashion line with Tommy Hilfiger, showcasing his understanding of the Stones' brand power. Jagger never strayed far from the spotlight. His high-profile appearances, like performing at the 2006 Super Bowl halftime show, kept him in the public eye. He continued to be a cultural touchstone, engaging with new generations of fans and artists, and remaining as relevant as ever. The 2000s also saw Jagger's influence on popular culture reaffirmed. The Rolling Stones' music was ubiquitous, featured in films and advertisements, and covered by artists across various genres. Their legacy was not just one of longevity, but of adaptability and an unerring ability to resonate with the zeitgeist. The 2010s unfurled as a bittersweet symphony for Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, weaving triumph with personal tragedy. The decade marked the Stones' 50th anniversary, a feat that few bands have ever achieved, let alone with the enduring vitality that the Stones displayed. In 2012, they celebrated their golden milestone with the 50 and counting on tour, which saw Jagger, Richards, Watts, and Wood proving that age had done little to diminish their energy and showmanship. Fans, some spanning three generations, flocked to their concerts, illustrating the timeless appeal of their music. The Stones' new music during this era included the release of Blue and Lonesome in 2016, an album that took them back to their blues roots. It was a homage to the music that had inspired them to pick up instruments in the first place, and it was met with critical acclaim. It also won them a Grammy for Best Traditional Blues Album. However, the 2010s were not without their trials. In 2014, Jagger faced profound grief with the death of his partner, fashion designer Loren Scott. Her suicide was a tragedy that struck the heart of Jagger's personal life. Fashion designer, who was also Mick Jagger's girlfriend, was found dead in her New York apartment and apparent suicide causing the band to postpone their tour of Australia and New Zealand. Jagger was deeply affected. Loren Scott was a towering figure during her time, not just in her height, which soared over six feet, but in the fashion world, where her designs graced the silhouettes of stars. She had an eye for elegance that could make the simplest dress speak volumes. But Mick Jagger is the swaggering frontman of the Rolling Stones, whose voice and moves defined rock star. He lived in a whirlwind of music and fame, but in Elren, he found a kindred spirit, a calm in the storm. She became his partner, his confidant, and for 13 years, they were together. They were an unexpected duet, Loren and Mick. She, the quiet force behind stunning gowns, and he, the electric legend on stage. She brought a touch of timeless grace to his world, and perhaps he brought a spark of wild energy to hers. Her absence left a silence in Mick's life and in the fashion world that once buzzed with her creativity. The band, showing their deep camaraderie, postponed their tour, giving Mick the space to grieve. When they resumed, Jagger's performances were as electrifying as ever. The Stones resumed their tour, with Jagger delivering performances that belied his personal turmoil. Amid these personal upheavals, the Rolling Stones remained a cultural force, they played a historic free concert in Havana, Cuba in 2016, an event that would have been unthinkable during the heights of their fame when rock music was banned in the country. As with any iconic figure, Jagger was not immune to conspiracy theories. There were murmurs that his seemingly boundless energy and trim physique were not just the result of genetics or a healthy lifestyle, but perhaps something more unorthodox. These theories, while unsubstantiated, added an element of intrigue to the ever enigmatic singer. As the world stepped into the 2020s, the Stones faced the future with their legacy firmly intact, ready to confront new challenges and continue their reign as rock royalty. 
However, Jagger's life was not without its darker moments. The sudden death of Lorenz Scott in 2014 sent a shock through his life. A painful reminder that behind the indomitable stage persona was a human being susceptible to profound loss. The Rolling Stones launched into the No Filter Tour, proof that their appetite for live performance was insatiable. But it wasn't just old fans they were playing to. A new generation was discovering the Stones, with Jagger's dynamic presence as compelling as it was when they first burst onto the scene in the 60s. In interviews, Jagger often reflected on his career, the changes in the music industry, and his own creative process. He showed astuteness and an awareness of his position in the pantheon of rock legends, always looking to the future, even as he navigated the complexities of his legacy. But the band's journey was not without its hurdles. In 2019, Jagger underwent heart surgery, a reality check that even rock stars are not invincible. The news of his surgery and his swift recovery became a source of speculation and concern. Fans and the media pondered the implications for the band's future, but Jagger was back on his feet, ready to continue touring within weeks. Jagger's role in the band and his solo ventures continued to intersect in fascinating ways. He dipped his toes into acting once more, starring in the thriller The Burnt Orange Heresy in 2019. His performance was a reminder of his versatility and his ability to captivate audiences. No critic has spoken to this guy in over 50 years. Not just as a musician, but as a performer. The web of Jagger's family is extensive, with his children's lives sometimes becoming as public as his own. From Jade Jagger's endeavors in fashion to Elizabeth Jagger's modeling career, his family has inherited a touch of his fame and creative spirit. Throughout his life, Jagger has navigated the complexities of public relationships, the scrutiny of the press, and the joys and challenges of fatherhood. His relationships with his children and his partners have been as dynamic and multifaceted as his career, with the public's interest in his private life never waning. Yet, for all the public fascination with his personal affairs, Jagger has rarely allowed this attention to detract from his music. The Rolling Stones' work ethic with Jagger at the fore has been relentless, with their tours and albums continuing to draw in crowds and earn accolades. There have been few theories about Jagger's personal life, save for the occasional unsubstantiated rumor about the true nature of his relationships or the secret to his enduring energy and youthfulness. The most enduring mysteries surrounding Jagger have not been about shadowy dealings, but rather about how he has managed to balance such a public life with the demands of his career. Jagger, now in his 80s, has not only defied age, but also transcended the very concept, remaining a fixture in an industry that worships youth. The Rolling Stones have not rested on their laurels. Instead, they've continued to tour, with their No Filter Tour picking up again in 2021 after a hiatus due to Jagger's heart surgery and the global pandemic. Their return to the stage was a triumphant assertion of their continued relevance and Jagger's remarkable recovery and enduring stamina. In these later years, Jagger has also embraced the digital age with an active presence on social media. His posts offer glimpses into his personal life and his views on current events, bringing him closer to his fans. In 2020, he released the track Easy Sleazy with Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, a collaboration that bridged generations of rock music and provided a satirical take on the COVID-19 pandemic. Beyond his musical achievements, Mick Jagger's contribution extends to other forms of entertainment. Mick Jagger's talents have danced beyond the music stage into the glittering world of movies. With that magnetic charisma, he didn't just dip his toes into acting, he dove in. Think about it. This is a man who never does things by halves. His movie debut? That was back in 1970 with Performance, where he played a rock star. Talk about art imitating life, right? And he didn't stop there. In Ned Kelly, 1970, he swapped his microphone for a set of guns as the legendary Australian outlaw. A bit of a leap from rock and roll, but Mick was never one to shy away from a challenge. 
Fast forward to the 90s and there's Mick in Free Jack 1992, a sci-fi thriller that had him chasing immortality. Then he showed us he could do quiet intensity in The Man from Elysian Fields, 2001, where he played the owner of an escort agency. It was a side of Mick that the spotlights and stadiums never showed. But Mick's creativity wasn't just for the big screen. He founded Jagged Films, his own production company, which gave us Enigma in 2001, a wartime thriller that had everyone on the edge of their seats. And let's not forget The Women, 2008, where he was the producer, not the star, but his touch was all over it. Through these roles and projects, Mick brought the same raw energy to films that he did to his music. He might be known for his voice and those legendary moves, but his work in films proves that there's more to Mick Jagger than just rock and roll. Mick Jagger didn't just make his mark in the entertainment industry. He also ventured into the business world with the savvy of a seasoned entrepreneur. He understood that the showbiz sparkle isn't just about the applause. It's also about the deals behind the scenes. So he put on his business hat and got to work. Jagger dipped his toes into the fashion waters, aligning with his rock star image and the fashion icons he mingled with. He also played his cards right in the property market, investing in real estate, a move that's as classic as his tunes, but with a modern twist. Imagine Mick, not just in the studio, but in the boardroom making decisions that would expand his empire beyond the stage. But Mick's business interests weren't just in things you can touch. He's got a sharp mind for the digital world, too. He's been involved in tech ventures that are as cutting edge as his music was back in the day. He's embraced the internet era, understanding that the digital stage is as important as the physical one. From fashion to real estate to technology, Mick Jagger's business ventures show the same boldness and innovation that he brought to music. Jagger's influence extends into activism and philanthropy. His support for environmental causes and his advocacy for music and the arts have solidified his role as a conscientious voice in the global conversation. He has been vocal about climate change and has used his platform to raise awareness about this critical issue. In the fight against climate change, Jagger has supported global movements and encouraged his vast fan base to take action for the planet. In times of disaster, Jagger has stepped up to provide aid. He and the Stones have participated in relief concerts, such as the concert for New York City after the 9-11 attacks and the 12-12-12 concert for Hurricane Sandy relief. These events not only raised substantial funds for victims, but also served as a beacon of hope and solidarity in the face of adversity. Education is another sphere where Jagger's philanthropic touch has been felt. He has supported music education for underprivileged children, understanding the role that music can play in enriching lives and fostering talent. His contributions have helped provide instruments and teaching to those who might otherwise never have the opportunity to pursue music. While some fans whimsically speculate about secret elixirs, or an extraordinary genetic inheritance. The truth about his physical strength seems to be a combination of a disciplined lifestyle, passion for what he does, and a great spirit. Mick Jagger's life story could fill a library of rock and roll tales, a blend of fierce music, family sagas, and forays into film and business. From the Church of England to the temples of Laos, from Catholicism to the pages of atheism, his spiritual journey has been as eclectic as his musical genres. His personal life is a tapestry of relationships with love stories that have brought eight children into the world who themselves have stepped into the spotlight in various ways, carrying on the Jagger legacy. Jagger didn't just strut on music stages, he also stepped onto the silver screen. He showed us his acting chops in films like Performance and Ned Kelly, and later as a savvy businessman behind the scenes in production, he put stories into motion with films like Enigma. His business ventures stretched from fashion to real estate, showcasing a mind as strategic as it was creative. Through it all, his music has been the constant soundtrack, evolving over the decades, reflecting the times, and influencing generations. His melodies have become anthems, 
and his performances are etched into the collective memory of rock and roll enthusiasts worldwide. From a young man with a harmonica to a knighted rock icon, Mick Jagger's journey is a testament to a life lived loudly, a symphony of success, reinvention, and enduring appeal. Let us know your thoughts on his life and career in the comments section below.